Here is the Midnight News, and this is Alva Liddell... For nearly 40 years, the BBC ruled the airways with little or no competition. But then in the mid-60s, something happened which would change the way we listen to music forever. Pirate radio. It challenged the BBC's monopoly. The government tried to shut them down but couldn't, as they operated out to sea in international waters. Several pirate ships were launched. Probably the most famous was... Caroline! Radio Caroline. Almost overnight, there were lots of opportunities for budding disc jockeys, like myself. So in the springtime of 1964, I reported for my first shift on Radio Caroline. I took along with me a small movie camera and recorded events on board. I recently came across the film in my attic. I hadn't seen it for decades, and until now, the footage has never been broadcast. It's a unique insight into what life was like working on pirate radio. Radio Caroline was moored off the Essex coast. To get out to the ship, you had to pass through customs and immigration in Harwich and show our passports. There was no problem leaving British soil, but two weeks later on our return trip, we were sometimes strip searched by customs looking for drugs and alcohol. To travel out to the Radio Caroline ship, we had to travel some 15 miles in a small boat. And let me tell you that in bad weather, that wasn't exactly a bundle of laughs. Quite often it'd be very, very choppy and not all the disc jockeys had their sea legs and they would be sick and it wasn't too nice a time travelling, which would take anything up to an hour and a half. And then we'd arrive at the Radio Caroline ship and it would be a leap of death, literally, where you've got a small boat bobbing up and down and you've got the large boat Radio Caroline doing that. And you had to time it so that you jumped from the small boat on board to Radio Caroline. And if you missed, ooh, you're dead. Forty years later, another Caroline ship, the Ross Revenge, is moored at Tilbury Docks in Essex. Watching my old home movie has really brought back memories, so I've come to have a look around the ship. Joining me is one of my old pirate mates, Tony Blackburn. God, just like old times, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, isn't it? It uh, brings back the memories a bit, doesn't it? Not half. Yeah, three, not half. <laughs> sound, like, sound like Alan Freeman, then. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we were out on the different ships for three years altogether, weren't we? We were. I mean, I, I really do think if it hadn't been for Radio Caroline, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have been able to get into radio. It gave us a career. Now, you've got a choice of any record yeah. you'd like to play on the programme, Tony. What would you, what would you play? Well, I think what I'd rather like to hear is Reach Out and I'll Be There by the Four Tops. Good gracious me, what a fantastic record. Now, if you feel that you can't go on... At the height of Pirate Radio, there were nearly a dozen different stations broadcasting off the East Anglian coast. So here we are in the main studio. Hmm, looks a bit antiquated, don't you think, Tony? Yeah, but it worked, didn't it? And it brings back lovely memories. I mean, uh, the thing I remember, boys, is that when we were in the very high seas, the Ten Force Gales, mm. uh, we were being thrown around, but the music kept playing, and I used to throw ashtrays around what? the place to make it sound more dramatic. <laughs> you, <Is it>? yeah. <laughs> you little devil, you. Well, because, I mean, you know, people love that, didn't they? they I mean, I think the great thing about the, the pirate ships was the fact it was a family atmosphere, wasn't it? Very much. Nice. Uh, this is Tom Jones wishing Radio Caroline a happy birthday and uh, a swinging future. That is 65, 66, and I hope 67, 68, 69. It's not unusual you want to be loved. The Pirates were so popular because, unlike the BBC, they played non-stop pop music. Millions of listeners were tuning to Radio Caroline. It, it was so hugely successful. Uh, we also had got the pick of the pop stars because we helped m break quite a number of new artists, new recording stars, new producers, new songwriters, and they tuned to Radio Caroline that we gave them the exposure. And in turn, they came out and visited us, Gene Pitney, the Walker Brothers, and many, many other stars, including the Beach Boys and Tom Jones. One of those tempted out for a guest appearance was teenage sensation Twinkle. She was quite big in those days. She had an awful record, actually, to be honest, called Terry. Please wait at the gate of heaven for me. She came and she made a publicity stunt out of it by staying on board the night. She uh, purposely said, I'm not going to leave, and she stayed on board the night, and we never used to have girls on board, you see. 
So this was quite an event. But uh, we were all very gentlemanly, and uh, I remember we all just sat round and had a chat, and then we all went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we are in a bunk room, and we had to share, didn't we, those days? Certainly did, yeah. I mean, um, we were on board for two weeks at a time and a week off, so uh, we had somebody to share with, and it was... Uh, I just always share with DLT, actually, David Lee Travers. I shared with uh, an Australian guy called Brian Vaughan. But certainly those days, you found out who your friends were. Certainly did, yes. Dave's socks had an interesting aroma. Really? Yes, I can remember them to this day. And how did it go? Whew. <laughs> the ship itself was quite large and comfortable, but there were a few rules. Alcohol was strictly rationed, and overnight visits from girlfriends definitely not allowed. Looking after us was a Dutch captain and crew. Well, here we are in the mess, or... Mm. or uh, galley. Is the technique. Is it, what is it, a galley? No, the galley's where they make the food, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. But here, thing. this is where we used to eat it. That's right, yeah. What are your memories of uh, the food those days? Well, I think my memories of the food were um, the Dutch used to put nutmeg on everything. Even the cornflakes? Oh, everything. I, it, horrible. I hated nutmeg. And uh, they used to do that. And then, I'm a vegetarian, they used to serve up raw herring. Do you remember that? I do. That's right. <laughs> Which I never used to eat. <laughs> so I used to, what I used to do, I don't know, um, I used to just get a loaf of bread Eat yeah. the bread the whole time. That was a, that was a basic. Really? Food. Yeah, I didn't. I hated the food out there. That was the only thing I didn't like. It's difficult now to imagine just how popular the pirate stations were. Back in the mid '60s, there were only two television channels, and they only broadcast for part of the day. Radio was still the most popular medium. The DJs were even more famous than the pop stars whose music they played. I remember once I said, uh, "I'm going to be driving back to London from Harwich in a red sports car." And if you wave to me, uh, I'll give you a record. People were lined, I, people were lined from Harwich right the way along the motorway, or it wasn't the motorway in those days, it was road. And I ran out of records, I think, within half a mile, just stopping and starting. It was just unbelievable. We got mobbed when we came off the ship sometimes, and it really was uh, the most amazing experience to go through. I mean, it's one that I'm so proud of. By the summer of 1967, the days of the pirate radio ships were numbered. The Labour government, who had tried so hard to close down the pirates, finally succeeded by passing the Marine Etc. Broadcasting Offences Bill. Radio Caroline would try and get around the law and continued broadcasting on and off to the present day. As for myself, I jumped ship and joined BBC Radio One. Another chapter in broadcasting history had begun.